The expectations of others is something one never gets a say on. Some people are molded by them, some are crushed by them, and some try their very best to carry on, aware of the burden on their shoulders. In the world of mobile suit guns, Universal Century, the practice of mobile suit development usually involved a great deal of research, planning, and of course testing. During the One Year War, many did rise to the challenge, be them Elliot Rem, Jotunheim's 603rd Technical Evaluation Unit, Yukajima's Guinea Pig Team, and of course, the resilient redhead of the Ribo Colony who refused to retreat, choosing to respond instead, Christina McKenzie. As a quick disclaimer, I'll be covering Chris's appearance in the 1989 OVA, leaving out both her appearance in the MSVR Shin Matsunaga manga and the ongoing 2021 War in the Pocket manga by Hiroyuki Tamakoshi, mostly due to the fact that I haven't read them yet. Anyways, Lieutenant Christina McKenzie, or Chris for short, is a 21-year-old Earth Federation test pilot, one of the three main characters of the 1989 Ganem OVA 0080 War in the Pocket, and the next-door neighbor of the 11-year-old Al Izaruha. We first see her in the latter half of Episode 1, How Many Miles to the Battlefield, where she runs into Al, quite literally. In a lot of ways, she acts like an older sister to little Alfred, listening to his complaints about school, not snitching on the little take when he sneaks off, even humoring his no girls allowed rule, which Al came up with on the spot to cover the fact that there's a Zaku 2 Kai just lying flat on a colony hill where he's hidden. Personality wise, Chris is very much a girl next door type character with a hint of tomboyishness, which as her father hints at could be what made her join the Federation forces. Being a baseball player in her earlier years, she also has one mean swing, as seen in episode 3, where she swiftly knocks out Bernie Wiseman upon mistaking him for a home invader. Chris is very good at keeping calm and collected in most situations, be it having to face an enemy attack in a mobile suit she is barely accustomed to, or keeping her composure as one of the colony's detectives gets on her case, bringing up the number of casualties the colony sustained in the attack. As I've mentioned earlier, Chris is stationed on the Ribo colony of Site 6 as a test pilot with the mobile suit she pilots in the show being the RX-78 NT-1 Alex, which is a high-performance machine and a soon-to-be upgrade to Emerald Race original RX-78-2 Gundam. This one is a significant upgrade to its late 70s predecessor, sporting magnetic coating, drastically improved thrusters, more built-in weapons, better cockpit internals and the option to equip a wearable explosive reactive armor which could protect the Alex from a wide range of ballistic and explosive projectiles. This machine was tailor-made for a new type of pilot, which is both the Alex's biggest strength and its most significant shortcoming. Suffice to say, given that she is essentially the shoe fitter for the Alex, Amaro Ray's future machine, that is admittedly a large pair of shoes to fill, and the fact that Chris's superiors are rather quick to hand wave or ignore her concerns and sensibilities isn't helping either. Despite that, she carries on regardless, trying her best to master piloting the NT-1, even despite having to face high-end late war models, both in simulation and in real life. Arguably, there are also multiple parallels to be made between Chris and the show's second main character Bernie Wiseman, with both working as substitutes for better performing pilots, filling in for Andy Strauss and Amaro Ray respectively. I guess that's why the two click together so well, with Chris and Bernie addressing one another by their first names and asking Elle about the other in their absence. However, her nigh unstoppable drive to act and its results aren't devoid of personal tragedies. Towards the latter half of War in the Pocket's final episode, the third Zeon attack occurs, in a bid to protect Elle's hometown once again. She sorties in the still battle damaged Alex NT1 for one last time and goes out of her way to forego the more advantageous flat terrain of the colony's urban landscape to limit potential civilian casualties, pursuing Bernie's Zakutu Kai into the foothills. This quickly turns into a knockdown dragout fight between the two, with the battle becoming incredibly melee heavy. There is no glory in any of this, just two people desperately trying not to die and to defeat the opposing machine completely unaware of the fact that one of the people they sought to protect was their opponent. 
with the two sustaining both multiple injuries and heavy damage to their respective mobile suits. The fight brings them closer to the city, where the two make their final attack, wrecking both mobile suits and ending the life of the Zaku Tukai's pilot. Once the dust settles and Chris gets her wounds treated, it is apparent that both her and her machine are in no condition to keep fighting, and as such, she is quickly reassigned elsewhere. On her way out, she meets little Alfred, who spares her the burden of knowing Bernie's true fate. Despite being a character with the least amount of screen time of the trio that composes the main cast, Christina McKenzie is a decently fleshed out character that feels very human. She gets frustrated, she gets scared, but at the end of the day, to put it in her own words, and that is a principle she never reneges on, which makes her both very endearing and very respectable. With that being said, thank you for watching this one. Should you feel compelled to support the channel, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash the shirtlad. And if you want to get your very own Chobam armor, I'm pretty sure Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam half 0087 7 another story comes with one. Just kidding, it does come with anime to these two. Come catch y'all later, Shirtlad signing out.